Today I'm uh, actually doing a little bit of preparation on a section of frill or the collar from a triceratops. It's a fairly large specimen and uh, I'm using some hand tools and some uh, pneumatic tools to remove the rock from around the fossil. So when I'm preparing the softer rock or the more fragile specimens, I tend to use hand tools like dental picks to remove the rock. But sometimes when you get into harder rock or more robust specimens, I like to bring out a little bit more of a powerful tool called a air scribe. And it's driven by air and it's a tiny little jackhammer that goes up and down and removes the rock a little bit easier. So when the big tools are too big and the small tools aren't enough, we have one for in between. So behind me is a big jacket, a plaster jacket. And what we do uh, was when we were out in the field and we were trying to protect the specimen, we uh, put a cast of uh, plaster and burlap uh, around the specimen to keep it from falling apart further, uh, protect it from the elements, and it adds a level of shock absorption when you travel. So we have many field jackets still in the collection waiting to be opened, but in this case, this one here was collected by Charles Sternberg in 1929. Yes, yeah, so I'm just uh, finishing up this side of the jacket, which is the, uh, the, the back side of the skull, and we've already started preparations for a reverse jacket, and early next week we'll be uh, putting that all together and flipping the whole thing over and starting preparation on the front side of the skull. We're hoping that the little bit of skin that we found on, uh, right here continues across the rest of the skull. So once I'm finished work on the smaller section, it's on to the larger, more complete specimen, and that'll take about two years. I know it seems like a long time to so spend two years working on one specimen, but the discovery of the skin adds to the science, and, and who knows? It could be the world's largest triceratops specimen. <laughs>